For three seasons, the show has asked one question, how do you escape? But there's a pattern hidden in the town that suggests escape was never the point. Look at the days in the bottle tree, 1864 and 1931. In 1978, fans thought they were just random years, making cycles of people arriving, but they're not. In 1864, James Clerk Maxwell published his theory unifying electricity and magnetism, the first time humanity understood that invisible forces connect all of reality. In 1931, Carl Jensky discovers cosmic radio waves proving the universe is speaking to us in frequencies we cannot hear. These are not random dates, they are the moments humanity fundamentally change. It's understanding of how reality works and they correspond exactly to the cycles of reincarnation in the town. The town is not just trapping people, it's waiting, waiting for humanity to evolve enough scientifically to finally understand what it actually is. A dimensional prison built from emotional energy that operates on quantum principles we're only beginning to understand. Miranda failed, Christopher failed, every cycle before them failed. Tabitha and Jade are the first reincarnations living in an era where we understand quantum mechanics, dimensional theory, and the patterns of consciousness. The hidden clue is not in the past, it's in the timeline itself. The town has been waiting for us to get smart enough to solve it, and we finally are. So if the days mark humanity evolution in understanding physics, then someone in the town needs to be smart enough to use that knowledge. And that is Jade. Jade is not some rich tech bro. He's an engineer who made millions designing algorithms. From the moment he arrived, he's been applying quantum theory to explain the town. When Tabitha escaped through the lighthouse and appeared in the real world, everyone thought it was a miracle. Jade immediately called it a quantum event, maybe a wormhole, a dimensional rift. He understood her impossible journey was not magic, it was physics we don't fully understand yet. He referenced even the Einstein and Podolsky paradox, the thought experiment that proves quantum entanglement is real. He's using the same framework scientists use to study how observation affects reality. And here's the key moment when explaining why the town's events are not random. He brings up the chaos theory. He tells Tabitha about the butterfly effect. And a butterfly flaps its wings in Wyoming. A month later. On the surface, unrelated, but in reality, there's a detailed set of connections. So this is not just dialogue, it's a show telling us Jade sees what everyone else cannot, while Boyd tries to fight the monsters, and the others accept the reality. Jade is mapping the invisible structure. He understands that in quantum systems, everything is connected through fields we cannot see. The town operates the same way. When he obsess over the symbol, he's not going crazy, he's recognizing a pattern that exists across time. The same symbol Christopher saw, the same symbol encoded in the tree. He's literally observing quantum entanglement in action. His consciousness is linked to Christopher across lifetimes because they are the same wave function, collapsed into different moments. So Jade understands what everyone else doesn't. The town is not a supernatural curse, it's a system, a complex dimensional structure where emotional energy, hope, grief, memory operates as a physical force. So this is the first point. As we know, the children poured their hope into the roots. That a hope became the faraway trees. That's not a metaphor, it's emotional energy becoming matter. Quantum mechanics tells us that observation collapse probability waves into reality. Consciousness affects the physical world. The town is a place where that principle is amplified to an extreme, where thoughts and emotions doesn't just influence reality, they created. Miranda had intuition, she felt chosen, she knew the drawings and the paintings mattered, but she didn't have the framework to understand why. Now, Jade does. He's been given the exact skill set, quantum theory, chaos theory, pattern recognition, needed to decode a dimensional prison built on principles that only live at the cutting edge of modern science in the show. So we know that the town didn't trap him by accident, it's been waiting for someone like him, someone who can finally translate the children's hope, encode it roots into a solvable equation. And it's no coincidence that he's spiritually tethered to Davata, the science and the empathy the mind and the memory finally arriving in the same cycle. And that's exactly what he's doing with those bottle tree numbers. So we know the numbers are musical notes. And suddenly he and Tabata remember everything, who they were, what they failed to do, and why they keep coming back. But here's the question, why music especially? Why not words carved into trees? Why not a visual symbol? Why did the children encoded their hope as a melody? 
because music is the only language that exists as a pure frequency, and frequency is how information travels through dimensions, through time. Think about what the body trees dates taught us. 1931, we learned that the universe broadcasts information as invincible frequencies. I mean, the children didn't have quantum computers. They don't understand equations, but they understood something primal. Sound, music, carries across distance that sight and touch cannot. A mother's lullaby reach a child in the dark. Music transcends language, transcends time, transcends the barrier between life and dead. When they poured their hopes into the roots, they encoded it as a frequency waiting for someone with the right knowledge to decode it. Jim saw this pattern. He recognized it. Then Jade translated those numbers into notes. He played the melody. And as we know, it triggered memories. But it didn't free the children. But think about every time music appears in the show. The music box doesn't play randomly. It plays when the town is communicating with something. We can see it when the monsters stop. And that's the man in yellow said. And going back to season 1 that established this pattern, Music equals memory. Music equals pain. Music equals the town control. We just didn't understand we were being shown the prison's power source from the very first episode. Because here's what everyone missed. The melody is not the key to freedom. It's a system of the trap. Music is vibration. The children's hope energy encoded itself as a song. And that song has been playing on infinite loop for decades, maybe centuries. The town doesn't exist despite the song. The town exists because of the song. The frequency holds the dimensional structure together. As long as the melody plays, the loop continues. The show has been telling us from season 1, music in Fromville is never comfort. It's a weapon, a trigger, a prison, and the nursery rhythm tells exactly how to break it. They come, they come for three, unless you stop the melody. Not completed, stop it. For three seasons, everyone assumed stop the melody. Meant finishing the song, complete the ritual, break the music box. We were wrong. Even stop the melody of the town. Silence it, ended. Think about what Victor told us. Poured their hope into the roots that make the symbol and those roots became the tree. The children were taken to the caves. In their final moments, they gave their hope into the roots. That hope became the song. That hope became the numbers. But hope is not always salvation. Hope can be a step to let go. The children's hope, their belief that someone would come, that someone would save them, encoded itself as a frequency. Every note is their last breath. Every repetition is them reliving their dead, waiting, hoping, never release. This why and Kiwi means remember. Remembering without releasing just makes the loop better. The children need someone to remember and to give them permission to forget, to stop the song that kept them frozen in their final moments. Jay decoded it, Tabata remember it, but performing the song won't free them. It would reinforce the loop. So when we look at everything in this theory, it means that how to break it is by doing one thing. The real ending is not Tabata singing the lullaby, it's Tabata and Jade choosing not to sing at all. It's about stopping the music, about stopping their hope, about freeing that hope. It's the reason the boy in white told Victor not to destroy the trees, because they are the kids. And the way to do this is by freeing them. Maybe there's another song that we have yet seen. It's a conscious choice to say you don't need this song anymore. You don't need hope. Hope is what's keeping you here. What you need is permission to stop waiting, to finally rest. The most powerful frequency is not sound, it's silence. Father Cathery said that the residents are living in Book 74. Julie is a story walker who can visit past chapters but cannot change them. If the town is a book, the music is a structure. The repeating melody is a pattern forcing the plot to repeat chapter after chapter with new characters but the same ending. But here's the key. If you're trapped in a story, how do you escape it? You don't finish the book. You close it. You don't complete the melody. You stop playing it. You silence the frequency. You collapse the pattern. Music is movement. Stories are movement. That's how you can escape a story. You stop telling it. The final scene will be them performing the lullaby at the lighthouse. It will be them choosing not to. Because stop the melody was never metaphorical. It was an instruction. As long as the frequency plays, the story repeats. There's something or someone. There's something or someone orchestrating and maintaining this melody across all these cycles. And we follow the breadcrumbs the show has been leaving us. He points directly to the man in yellow, the entity who has been positioned as the primary antagonist. 
the puppet master behind the town's supernatural horror, and most importantly, the creature who literally feeds on hope, sustaining himself on the very emotion that the children encoded into their roots when they pour their dying wishes into the yard, which means that he has an interest in keeping that song playing on an infinite loop. The moment the music stops is when it's finally over. The real ending of From is not an escape, the choice to stop telling a story that should never have been written. And see you in season 4.